Hello everyone, so in this video we are going to start with a new series which is the Streamlit series. So this series will be an entire introduction series where I'll be going through each and every concept that you need to know in Streamlit and also we'll be making some cool projects at the end. So this video is going to be a relatively shorter video where I'll be just explaining you the different display items and display elements. From the next video we are also getting into the uh, more in-depth stuff. So the way you need to do is first you need to have Streamlit already installed. You can do pip install Streamlit and all of that. And then what you need to do is you need to write a new Python file. So here the first thing that you need to do is have import Streamlit, Streamlit as st. Okay. Once you run it, then what you can do here is you can come and then go to the file or go to the folder where your this file this uh, for me it's vid1.py is saved so it is saved in streamlet and in this folder okay so if i just write uh, dir it will come so let's say now what we are going to do is we have to run this file let's just run it anyway so the way you run it is you write streamlit run and the uh, or okay i might have to go in another video code yeah in this directory it is there and then i have to write streamlit run and the name of the file so which is vid1.py now i'm going to hit enter so as you can see a streamlit window has opened on my browser but this is not displaying anything because we have not printed anything so we will go back to our code and let's say we are going to print out the very simple the first element that we have in streamlit which is a simple text and for that we write st.text and then just write in a piece of text so this is this is a text let's just print it this okay so we will save it and we don't have to press f5 or run we just have to go to our browser where it was open and here you'll have the rerun option once you rerun you see your test has been uh, displayed so text has been displayed so you don't have to press f5 anywhere okay so this was the first element that we saw now we'll go to the second element which is one of the most important elements and which is st.write so we are going to basically use this st.write in almost every streamlit program okay because it's so easy to it does a lot of things and with just one line of code so well the basic way is you can use it for a simple text but i'm going to show you a very different kind of a formatted text because you can use this st.text for a simple text so you can use st.write so let's say this is this is a uh, this is just a, let's say i want to use this is just okay i want to print this but i want the word just to be bolden okay to be bold so in order to make it bold you need to have two dots or uh, two asterisk marks over here and two here okay and you cannot use all of these formatting in st.text so st.text is only for simple text st.write gives you the flex flexibility to do a lot of things okay so we will save it go to our browser and rerun so this is just you can see the just part has is bold and this is not bold okay now let's say you want to add some more things let's say you want to add uh, a word and now you also want to add italics you want to use the italics so let's say you are going to have double asterisk which means it will make it bold one more or two more and this is just a test but this one you want to make it italics so what you can do is you have to start and end with an underscore i'll save this go to my browser and rerun so you can see the test is also bolded but it is in the italics it is a little bit slanted okay so this is how you do it fine so this was the first one the first use of write but there are dif different things that you can do so for example let me go and have uh, let me go and have a csv file okay let me display a csv file so i'm going to say first i have to import pandas so i'm going to say import pandas as pd as pd okay and i have to read a csv file so i'm going to say pd dot read csv okay now i need to pass the path so if i am not okay so i have written down the real path over here so my full path was here because the data the data folder or rather the data frame the csv file was not in this folder not in the video code folder 
so i had to give the entire path so once you go there and i have actually rerun it if you press rerun you'll have this okay so this was our data frame the other things as well now what you can do over here is let's see if you hit on these years then this will be in the sorted order okay if you want to hit it again it will be in the descending order and if you want to just hit it again if you hit it again it will come back in the real order that is the uh, original order same thing for money okay but these things we will cover it in the next videos as well now what i'm going to do is instead of doing this what you can do is let's let's just keep df over here and what i can do is let's have a dictionary so i'm going to say dc is a dictionary and i'm going to have let's say some elements a corresponds to 10 then b corres b corresponds to let's say 20 and then c corresponds to let's say 30 okay so this is our dictionary now I, what i want to do is i want to print this dictionary so i'll i'm going to say st dot write and i'm going to say dc now i'm going to uh, come over here and then rerun so you can see the dictionary is printed so there are a lot of things that you can do in streamlit i'll be showing you some more things okay so let me just remove it from here the next thing that you can do is actually plot a uh, matplotlib figure so let's say i'm going to import two things now i'm going to import numpy as np and i'm also going to import matplotlib dot dot pi plot as plt okay so this will be used for plotting so let's say i'm going to have some subplots so i'm going to say fig comma ax and we are going to say plt dot subplots okay and i'm going to print a or i'm going to have a scatter plot so i'm going to say ax dot scatter and here i have to give in some numbers so i'm going to give five numbers over here just np dot a np dot a range five a uh, range whatever and then i'm going to just pass the same thing but i'm going to square it so i'm going to square this double asterisk square okay now in order to show the matplotlib figure what you need to do is you need to write st dot write again which means you can do a lot of things so instead of the comma i have to give dot and now i have to just pass the figure okay now let me go over here and let me rerun you can see the figure as matplotlib figure has been plotted so you can basically plot any figure okay i've just uh, shown here a scatter plot you can have any plot that you want okay so which means this st dot rise right is very versatile okay and uh, what can i do more well i can write basically let's say if you want to see a documentation of something okay so you can also write a function so let me see what is the documentation of st dot write itself so i'm going to say st dot write save it then go and rerun so you can see the whole documentation of st dot, ST dot write has come so if you are if you don't have access to internet or whatever you can get all the documentations over here okay let's do for some other function so i'm instead of st dot write i'm going to pass st dot error then over here and then i'll rerun and you can see the documentation the official documentation of st dot error has come okay so if you don't have internet for whatever reason you can use this for getting the uh, your documentation lastly there are other things as well so one thing that i want to mention here is you don't always have to write st dot write I have seen in the newer version of streamlet that let's say as i showed i had uh, you know as i had showed you earlier you can write st dot write and then pass df once you save it you will have the data frame what if i'm not going to write st dot write i'm just going to remove it and just let df be there okay or dc let's have both of them df and dc and rerun you can see even without writing st dot write you have both the data frame and the dictionary so you can also use like this but i generally don't use like this i use st dot write okay now after st dot write what you can do is you can go to another uh, element which is st dot title now this comes in bundle so obviously any page has a title so let's say the title of our page is st dot title let's say this is the title okay now after that what you can do is you can also have a header file a header row so you can say just header and also okay my bad and also what you can do is you can you will also have subheaders so subheaders so here you can write subs okay my bad subheader fine so you can see the, the title of the page has come over here so it's not this title okay not this title i'm talking about the title of the page here 
and then you have a header and then you have subs you can have any text over here you can have any number of titles any number of headers and any, any number of subheaders that's totally up to you okay so i'm going to uh, select all of this hit alt and three so it will comment out everything lastly what you need to do is if let's say if you want to show some code okay so i'm going to have a snippet of code and i'm just going to write it over here i'm going to say def function so this is going to be a python code and let's say i'm going to use print uh, np dot arrange 10 and i just want to print the code i don't want to run it so for that you need to write st dot code you need to pass in the variable that is code and you also need to specify the language so the language is as we know is python python so we will go here and then we will run rerun the code so you can see the uh, code has been there and you can also copy it from here it will copy itself in the clipboard and then you can also uh, show it like this so this was it for this video i hope you understood the um, the video the code will be in github the link to the github is in the description and please subscribe to my channel for more videos thank you and bye